Hello YouTube and welcome back to episode 2 of Bit Manipulation. So last episode we kinda looked at things in a very abstract, overview -y kind of manner. We took a look at what exactly bit manipulation was and of course a general idea of how and why we need it. Today we're gonna actually jump in, not all the way, just slightly, and take a look at some of the things that can be done. More details of course after the break. <laughs> This is 0612 TV. Welcome aboard. So the basic thing we need to actually perform bit manipulations are actually what is known as bitwise operations. As its name implies, essentially what we are doing is an operation similar to, you know, just addition, subtraction, things like that. Except now, the operation we are working on works with bits. To be precise, this actually works with bits of any length, so in fact, you can use an entire number to do bit operations on. In fact, that's what we are eventually going to do, but not for today. Today, we're just going to look at individual bits. And of course, once you get what's going on today, we can then extend the ideas to working with actual numbers, which are basically strings of bits. And if you've been following me since, you know, a long time ago, and you've watched the Logic Gate series, well, a lot of the concepts I'm going to share with you today are basically similar, if not exactly the same. Now, for the purposes of today's explanation, what we're gonna do is we're gonna look at bits as true or false. So, of course, zero means false, one means true. So essentially, our perspective today is one of logic and not math. So we're dealing with true or false instead of zero and one. Once you learn today's concept in terms of logic, you can then, you know, sort of apply it to the numerical form and well, they actually work the same way. But anyway, without further ado, let us jump right in to look at some of the bit operations that can be done on single bits. The first operation we're gonna look at today is the NOT operation. Now, NOT only takes in one parameter. Essentially what that means is unlike the PLUS operation, which works with two numbers, NOT only works with one. Remember of course that the only values we can give it are true or false. So, in fact, if you think about it, you probably already know what the answers are. If I say not true, obviously not true is false. Similarly, not false is of course true. The not operator is essentially an inverter. Whatever value you give it, it gives you the opposite. Since there are only two, well, it essentially gives you the other value. That's as simple as it gets. We're done with one of them. Let's take a look at all. Or is an operation that requires two parameters. So it's meaningless to say or true because, you know, that doesn't really work. What you're going to need are two variables. So say false or true. That is essentially, you know, how you need to lay things out for it to make sense. But what does or mean in this sense? Essentially, the name of the operator itself or already gives you a clue. Essentially, for the result of an OR operation to be true, either one of its inputs must be true. So if I say A or B, of course A and B being variables, then you can say that the answer will be true if A or B is true. What this means of course is that if A is false and B is true, the final answer is true because one of A or B are true. Similarly, true true gives you true, and the only time you can get false as an answer is when both A and B are false. To represent all the possible answers you can get out of an OR operation between just two bits, we use what is called a truth table. We've covered this in great detail in the Logic Gate series, so I'm just gonna very quickly just gloss over this. Essentially, in a truth table, what you have are three columns. On the left two columns, you're gonna populate them with all the possible input values. Since we're talking about two bits, each of them having two possible values, there are two to a power of two or four total input values. And there are of course, false false, true false, false true, and true true. The rightmost column is essentially the output given the input in the same row. Obviously false false gives you false and everything else gives you true. Hopefully you can kind of follow, you know, what the thinking process is like. 
We're going to actually move on and cover a few more different operations and I'm going to go through them a little bit quicker. The next operation we are going to look at is AND. I'm sure you know what it does already. A and B implies that A and B have to be true for the answer to be true. So if we were to write up a truth table for it, obviously false false will give you false because neither of them are true. True false, not enough. You need both of them to be true. So the answer is still false. Same goes for false true. We need them both to be true. So the answer is still false. The only time we can write true in the last column is when the inputs are both true. Only when A and B are true is the final result true. Now, next up, I'm actually going to introduce you to an operation that is a little bit less immediately intuitive. This operation is the XOR operation. As you can tell from its name, this is in fact a stricter version of the OR operation. The full name for the XOR operation is the exclusive OR operation. What this means is that instead of the actual OR operation, which says if either one is true and, you know, even if they are both true, it still accepts it. The XOR operation is strict in the sense that it only wants one of the two inputs to be true. In the event that you give XOR both true inputs, it will actually return false. This is why of course the XOR truth table looks something like this. False false, obviously it doesn't work for all, it doesn't work for XOR either. The answer is false. True false is true because only one of them are true. Same goes for false true. However, when it comes to true true, the answer is false. And the reason for that, of course, is that little change in the condition. So all right, we have two more operations to cover. However, these are in fact just combinations of the NOT gate and the previous gates we've already seen. The NAND gate essentially is the same as an AND gate, and then you take the answer and you NOT the answer. So we're just going to go straight to the truth table. This is what the truth table looks like. Obviously, it's an exact inversion of the AND gate truth table. Then we move on to the NOR operation. Once again, just the inverse of the OR operation. The truth table looks like this. Essentially, everywhere you expect a 1, you get a 0 instead. Everywhere you expect a 0, you get a 1 instead. We can even do this to the XOR gate, giving us the X NOR gate. Exact same idea, everywhere I expect 1 you get 0, everywhere I expect 0 you get 1. As long as you think of any of these gates as just inversions of its normal form, you'll be alright, because essentially that's exactly what it is. So today we've looked at all the bitwise operations, we've tried to apply them to single bits. What we're going to do is we're going to actually eventually apply all these to multiple bits, and then in the last episode, we're going to actually put them together and actually apply this in a way that you know can actually be used to solve the problems that we covered in episode 1. But alright, that's all there is for this particular episode. If you have any comments, queries or suggestions, feel free to leave a comment in the comment section below. Don't forget to check out the official Twitter account for this channel at twitter.com slash 0612 TV. Don't forget to appreciate every like, favorite and subscription you give me. But until next time, you're watching 0612 TV.